All right, I wanted to talk to you guys this morning about a little bit of tuning. Sorry for the background. Uh, I got construction going on at the house, and I'm very sick right now. So, But I had to get this video out because we're dealing with tuning in the gravity flyer. So let's look at this. This is your gravity flyer here. Everything in this device is tuned to this center plate. So please understand this. When you start your testing, you must first tune this top plate this bottom plate, the eddy current that's going on into it, into this center plate. It gets high voltage in it, or static electricity is what I like to call it. So you get the static electricity on this top disc, you get it on the bottom disc, you get eddy current from the magnets on here, it all goes into your center plate. The first reading on your oscilloscope has to be what the center plate is. It's a baseline. It tells you exactly what you need to tune to. I've seen a lot of people out there, they take the frequencies, they go, okay, I got an ultrasound frequency, I got a frequency for my Tesla coil, and they, this, they just don't understand that this plate also puts off a frequency. So, you need to line up three different frequencies to make this work. Frequency is a real fickle thing. It has to be exactly the same frequency, or within a certain span. So every time you hear somebody say AM radio, what do they mean? If you put it on 540, you get a perfect clear signal from the AM radio. Put it to 542, you get a clear, you get a, some a clear signal. 546, you get the same thing. What am I trying to tell you? There's only a certain frequency band that you can hit here. So every time you put in these frequencies, if they're not in that, if you're off by like, See, the, the actual frequency is 20 kilohertz. It's coming out of the center disc. If you set your ultrasound around 40 kilohertz, you are way off, way off. You'll never hit it. You'll never match it. You have to start setting everything the same. You set your first one. You want the center disc. You want to know exactly what frequency it's putting off. Remember, even though the Tesla coil goes into it, you're still getting frequency from your center plate from all the interactions going on with the top, bottom, and center plate. Therefore, it's also pushing a signal back to your Tesla coil. Don't forget that. It is very important you understand that. It is a relationship between the two. That's why you tune them together. So, tune this. Know the frequency. So, if you take this whiteboard right here, right? And we're just going to make a frequency right here. Okay, I'm going to set this at my center plate. Now, I also have a frequency for my ultrasound here. And I also have a frequency for my Tesla coil. These all must now match up. So if I say this one's at 20 K H Z then this one has to be at 20 K H Z and then this one has to be there what happens if you have it wrong if you set this one at the 40 and you set this one at 10 the signals will not cross again we're looking for something that looks like an EMP in an EMP, you must have your frequencies just like this. If you'll notice, you want the EMP? They all have to align right at one spot. I didn't draw them that way, did I? These three here, these three, these three. In multiples of three, we are looking for them to go close to each other. Again, if you guys heard me before, this is your saw blade right here. This is your frequency pattern mix. These cannot be at 10 and 40 if this center plate is at 20. They have to be at 20. Okay? They have to match. Frequency is really fickle. 
It does not work if it does not match. It will not work at all. Okay? That's enough of that whiteboard stuff. Hopefully you guys are understanding this. When you get your gravity flyer here, again, frequency comes out of this. It goes into the Tesla coil. The Tesla coil has its own frequency that goes back into the center plate. Now your ultrasound at the very top will also have a frequency that goes into your center plate. All three match the center plate. If they are not the same frequency or in the same frequency band, they will not hit. You will not get that EMP effect. People ask about over unity. Yeah, it's going to produce an over unity. A EMP by nature is over unity. It's putting in a very small amount of energy and bringing out a giant amount of energy on the other end. You got to understand energy different than AC and DC to see that. Some people will get lost in that. AC and DC is not earth frequency. It's not the, the uh, energy of the earth. It's not any of those things. Okay, It's a man-made process. We're dealing with something with frequency, which is an earth process. This means that there's more energy there than you think you're going to get because it's tapping into something else. Therefore, we're looking for that effect. Again, do this first. Tune here. Then go to your Tesla coil and tune the Tesla coil back to this. So, you'll have to always keep a wire on this center plate to know exactly what the frequency is. You'll also have to keep one separate from the Tesla coil, just a wire next to it to pick up the exact frequency it's putting off. So, when you get your ultrasound going at the very top, it then crosses. Now please understand this. This whole thing uh, is three dimensions, not two. We see it on a telescope. It looks just like this, okay? Let me go ahead and wipe this off. We are not looking for an oscilloscope look when we do frequency. Not on this, it's 3D. So, if you ever hear me say, it's like a little ball, sound works in a different way, so it's frequency. So, if my frequency goes like this, goes here, it goes around this part of the ball, goes here, goes around this part of the ball, goes here, around this part of the ball, right? Now, your second frequency is going to go opposite. So, you go in here, it'll make this line on the back side, then it'll go here. Make the line on the back side and go here, and the same. Again, this one over the front, this one behind, just like that. Now, your ultrasound, because it comes down like this, right? It does not come down like these two frequency waves. It's simply coming down like this, so it must cross the line here. Again, 3D, not 2D, 3D. This is what you're getting. These little balls won't be here, by the way. It's just a simple understanding of expression of one line going behind the other. It's easier to see that way. Anyway, you're getting this coming down, and it's hitting right there. It must hit at the same frequency spot as this. We always see it like this. But this is what's actually going on here. It's important to know that. Okay? You have to match it so that these three peak together. That's when you're going to get your result. So... When we hear it ringing in the Tesla coil, what are we actually looking for? It's reverb. Anytime you get somebody on the mic who thinks it's very playful to put the mic too close to the speakers and all the audio equipment, and you get this nasty sound, and you want to curse the guy out, yeah, that's what you're looking for in this process. That's it. You're looking for reverb. You want it to make that sound. You want that Tesla coil to make that sound. Why? You're putting high voltage in this and this. There's magnets on this. You are getting a magnetic frequency. You know that your Tesla coil is an oscillating magnetic frequency. What happens when you put two magnetic frequencies next to each other? Reverb. Every time. You want to hear your Tesla coil sing? 
You want to hear it make those sounds? Get reverb. Feedback right into your testicle. Right there. Just slam it in. Loud sound. It's exactly what you want. This isn't one of those things that's kind of, hey, maybe it's there. No, it's there. It's there. It's annoying. It's like that guy that you don't want to be around playing with the mic. You just, it's annoying. So you're going to want to hear it. All the rest of the processes should fall into place now. This is what we're getting to when we get to tuning. Now, I don't show things on an oscilloscope a lot. I have to start doing that. I have a oscilloscope with two channels. I need probably three channels in order to show it properly. So you can see the points lining up. I did order one. Stuff is costing me a lot of money to make sure you guys see it right. But if you simply follow the understanding, you can understand now why Alexi can do it by ear. If he's hearing sound out of this, and it makes a sound with frequency, again, I showed that in one of my other videos, I know what he's listening for. Because this sound is now going to go back into my Tesla coil. The sound from my Tesla coil is going to go back into this. Now I need to align my frequencies. They have to hit the same point. They need to work together like this. They cannot be like this. No, no more this. This. Right here. Unity. That's what we need. Right here. We need the frequencies to match. That's why you tune the Tesla coil back to the center plate. That's why you tune the ultrasound to the same thing you're going to have set starting points. It's good to understand this. So when you tested every single part of everything, go back to that starting point and say, okay, if I know I need to be in this frequency range here for any of this to work, I have a range for my Tesla coil, I have a range for my ultrasound, and I have a range for my center plate. Now, where is the line I can put between all of them? You know, okay, I got it. So now I know that out of my center plate, I need to make an initial frequency that's going to be in line with the other two that can match it. So what am I going to do? I'm going to adjust this bottom one right here and this top plate right here closer or further away from the center plate in order to get the correct frequency out of my center plate. That is the adjustment you need to make first. Then you have a solid base frequency to start with. Now. You bring the Tesla coil, you say, okay, I can match that Tesla coil right here in this area. Let's go ahead and put that in. Now I'm going to tune the actual amount of power going into it up and down. And I'm going to make it match the exact oscillating frequency of that center plate. Now, here comes the fun one. Your ultrasound. You need to make sure that it crosses as it comes down. You got these working. You need this one working, and now, I can't get my hands to work the right way. This comes down, this, this goes over, boom, they hit. Right there at that point is exactly where you want to be. An explosion. You need it to hit. Now, again, remember what I said on the whiteboard. You do not want them to peak all at the same spot. The reason for that is you're not creating an EMP. You want the same thing you're looking for when you're looking for an AM radio signal. You don't want to hit it dead on, but you do want to come on both sides of it. Therefore, you get the energy out of it, but you're not getting the EMP. Your EMP is a bad thing. The government will show up and take all of your stuff for making that. That's not a good thing. You're looking for frequencies to be apart from each other. Again, peak, peak over here, peak over here. Circle. That's what you're looking for. Just like the three pyramids. One, two, three, circle the tops. We're good to go. We understand it now. Look, tuning this thing is a pain if you don't understand this. You'll just drive your head against the wall. I had to test every little part and show videos on my channel that were boring because I need you guys to understand this. This is not a voltage machine. It is a frequency machine. Frequency is fickle. It only works when things are aligned correctly. When they're not, good luck. You, you, might as well, you, you might as well give up now if you can't align frequencies. And this is what I'm trying to tell you. I had to buy better equipment to do it. Now we can tune this thing by ear. Just listen for the sounds. When this starts making a sound, 
Wait for the Tesla clone to make a sound. Now, you better have really good ears to do this. You better be, you know what I mean, some kind of crazy ear person that can hear everything. Okay? Or your dog starts howling, one or the other. Because you're going to get a really, really sharp tone out of it. So, anyway, guys, I hope this helps. I, I'm really trying to convey the information out there. It's sometimes hard when I try to write it out, but it's a lot easier when I tell you. So, hopefully you understood it. Get it. Can set start setting things this way. Because if we don't start setting them all the same way, guys, we're not going to get to the answer the same way. So, please, do it. Have fun. And if you like what you saw today, please like, share, subscribe, do all those fun things, and have yourself a great day. Thank you. If you guys want to see a live stream and do question and answers, please let me know in the comments below, and I'll go ahead and set that up. Anyway, thank you.